Right, pay attention, stay with me, stay alert, stay alive, because if you stay switched on, you can be aware to everything going on around you, like Aston Villa's continuing success in the Premier League. And today we're going to be talking about how and why they will be finishing in the top four this season. Mark my words. first thing we're going to do is have a look at Aston Villa's defensive line. They're extremely aggressive when it comes to offsides and it means that they're able to squeeze that pitch a little bit more. Uno Emery has taught this back line to be absolutely flawless when it comes to stepping up and holding their defensive positions. If you have a look at this, they're completely in a straight line holding their line to make sure that they can catch players and the opposition offside. Concert has the ball driving forwards, but it means that these three still have to hold their positions, hold their line. Nobody's out of order. Nobody is going to be stepping out of line, and it's just a brilliant job. This is the game against Arsenal. Here is another example, again, holding their line. It actually ends up being a big Arsenal chance, but if you look at the way they are positioned, look at the way they're going forward, they're going to catch players offside more often than not. And finally, we're going to have a look at their game against Manchester City. Look how high this line is, but it's also perfectly formed. You've got Dinia, you've got the two centre-backs, and you've got Konsa who's pushing up forwards a little bit more. Man City are going to find it difficult to play through this line into space because of how perfectly Aston Villa are holding their line. And we know that they're holding their line so very well because of the sum of the statistics. This is a table, and a really interesting one at that, that really highlights how well they are doing at catching players offside. From the time this data was taken, Aston Villa actually recorded 71 offsides against their opponents. That is an incredible difference. The nearest to them were Tottenham or Fulham at around about 43 or 42. That is a ridiculous difference. And then when you highlight some of the teams that they're competing with for those top four places, we have Manchester City, we have Liverpool, we also have the likes of Arsenal, Man United, Newcastle, all of them generally in and around that average 28 offside mark. But Aston Villa's 71 is something that really needs to be noted. And it's the aggressive, perfect line that's held by Aston Villa's defenders that allows them to really dictate and catch so many offside, obviously stopping them from getting those major shots onto goal. And obviously they're leading into VAR because they know that once a goal goes in or if they get a shot, VAR will more often than not bail them out. It allows them to cheat that little bit more. We saw Liverpool doing it a couple of seasons ago, Klopp's extremely high line up towards the halfway line, and eventually they dropped it back a little bit. Unai Emery is doing exactly the same thing, although I'd argue that his defenders are doing it a little bit better. The aggressive nature, the real bravery from holding that line just allows Aston Villa to catch so many more players offside, and therefore cancel out those attacks. But when it comes to offside, Aston Villa aren't any slouches either, they're actually the lowest ranked side in terms of catching themselves offside. They've only been offside 19 times this season out of the 26 games that they have played overall this season. Manchester City are the second lowest with 23 and when I tell you that their game against Aston Villa actually caused them to commit five offsides you'll know how impressive of a stat that is. Aston Villa are just flawless at making sure that they are able to be onside but at the same time having that aggressive defensive line stopping the opposition from really making any leeway. This in turn has a massive impact on their form in general but in particular I want to talk about their home form. They've actually played 10 games at home, won 9 of them and drawn one. They are unbeaten at home, scoring 29 goals and only conceding 8. That's a goal difference of 21. And as for the points per game, when you think that you can only have a maximum of 3 points per game, they're averaging 2.8. That is remarkable. Their away form is letting them down a little bit, but in terms of racing for the top four and battling for those Champions League places, Aston Villa are pretty much the best home side in the league bar none. But how are they achieving this? Well, if we dive into the numbers just a little bit, Aston Villa are here. And the stat that we're going to look at are errors leading to opponent's shots. Now, this is a major blunder or a major loss of possession that leads to an opponent getting a shot onto Aston Villa's goal. And as you can see, in the entirety of the season, they've only conceded five shots. That is pretty remarkable. When I show you the other teams that they're competing with in the top four I think it's pretty remarkable. We've got Newcastle United here, they've conceded 11, Chelsea 12, Arsenal 
12. Then you look at Tottenham, 13. Manchester City have actually conceded 11 errors that lead to shots onto goal. So Aston Villa are not only really good at holding their line, but they're also clinical in possession, making sure that they're able to complete their passes and get out without completing too many errors. And this obviously leads them to more attacks going forwards. And they don't have any problem doing that either. Let's look at them going forwards. This is highlighting goal creating actions. This is an action that is leading to a form of goal creation. That would be a pass for a shot or something of the like. And Aston Villa here is highlighted, and it's actually the second highest ranking in this set. Aston Villa have created 74 goal-creating actions. The only team to do more than that is Manchester City with 83. They are equal with Liverpool, they are equal with Tottenham, and they have more than Newcastle and Arsenal. And as for per 90, they're again equal with Liverpool and Tottenham, which are two of the most creative sides in the league and they have more than Arsenal, one of the more creative sides in the league. You can understand how high Aston Villa are doing but they're just going under the radar. They're extremely dangerous when it comes to creating different opportunities for themselves and they're also very very good at the back. Two things that come together perfectly to create a team that really needs to be considered for top four. I know I mentioned home form a little bit earlier but I think it requires mentioning again just to highlight the gravity of what Aston Villa are doing right now. I genuinely think they're going underneath the radar and they need to be looked at. They are fourth in the Premier League currently, but they are top when it comes to games at home. They've played 10, won 9, lost 1. But when you look at some of the other stats, they've only conceded 8 goals, 21 goal difference. And in comparison to the likes of Newcastle, we talk about Newcastle's fans being with them, making sure that they're able to drive them on. Newcastle are only achieving 2.18 points per match, which is no mean feat at all. But it's a far cry from Aston Villa's 2.8. That's near perfect maximum points. Arsenal, again, nowhere near as good. Manchester City, nowhere near as good. And even Liverpool. I think everyone ranks Anfield as the best home ground currently. But Aston Villa are proving them wrong at the moment. And it really is showing. It's telling. Aston Villa's ground is a fortress. And in fact, they've won 15 games on the bounce in all competitions at home. A truly a record to be revered. Now a lot of this great form from Aston Villa is down to a number of things. One of them is players really hitting their peak and Unai Emery getting the best out of the players in his team. The first player we're going to look at is Ollie Watkins. Obviously, he is the main striker for Aston Villa. He's got nine goals and eight assists. That's 17 goal contributions in 21 games. That's not bad at all. But when I tell you that he actually had an expected goals and assists of 13.6 you can tell he's actually overperforming what he's expected again getting the best out of their players Douglas Dubish is doing pretty phenomenal as well he's played 20 matches he's in the middle of the park he's got six goals and three assists that's nine in total but that's from a combined xg and expected assists of 4.5 nine over 4.5 he's essentially doubling his productivity or his expected productivity but the best for me is actually leon bailey now when i tell you he's played 19 games that's fine but he's only started nine of them which means that the 10 other matches have at least come on as a substitute he scored six goals he's got five assists which means 11 goal involvements from a combined xg and expected assists of 6.9 nearly doubling it once more it's these kind of players who, who have really resonated with the way that Unai Emery wants to play and resonated the way he wants to go forward that's really getting the best out of this Aston Villa side and it really is starting to get exciting for them and if this video up until now hasn't got you Aston Villa fans excited or it hasn't got the non-Villa fans aware to how good Aston Villa are this season then let me leave you with this this is Aston Villa's attacking sides and it allows and shows us what side they are dominant on or what side they prefer when in actual fact it's everyone the right side is 33 percent middle is 30 and obviously the left side is 37 which means they are equally as dangerous down every single part of the pitch they dominate the midfield area with 42 percent and it just means that they're a little bit more unpredictable and that little bit more dangerous can you cover ollie watkins in the middle of the park well yes you can but then you've got the left wing then you've got the right wing and it's the dynamism that they really try to go forwards 
take this example. Arsenal played Aston Villa in, in a game in which Aston Villa won 1-0 and we're going to have a look and break down this singular goal that they scored because they essentially get up the pitch and score in about five touches and it's the dynamism and movement and transition that I think is just sensational. So we've got Leon Bailey, we've highlighted him already on this video. We've got him here with the ball. He's being closed down by three Arsenal defenders. He's going to pass to Kamara, who is going to lay the ball off to Tiedemans. And then the move starts to flow. So let's let this go a little bit further. Kamara gets the ball. He's about to lay it off to Tiedemans, who does a lovely little flick round the corner to Leon Bailey, who is currently on his bike. He's beaten Zinchenko, who has decided to commit himself to Tiedemans, and then the space is wide open. The space is here, free, and it's ready to be exploited. If we fast forward this on a little bit, Leon Bailey's pace is something that Gabriel cannot deal with immediately. Declan Rice is shuffling into that centre-back role because of the fact that Gabriel has come out into that left-back position, and Zinchenko is obviously sprinting backwards at this point Aston Villa are causing massive massive problems for Arsenal Arsenal are on red alert they need to be covering the space they need to be making sure that they're marking players but they're not I want you to focus on John McGinn in this particular scenario because the amount of determination that he shows to get himself into the box and into a scoring opportunity is just remarkable we'll forward it on once more Leon Bailey has now leveled up Gabriel in a 1v1 situation. You could say this is very good on Gabriel's part, and it is, but Leon Bailey is a very good player in 1v1s. John McGinn is actually going to keep running into the box, and again, I want to highlight that there are no Arsenal players really looking for him. Declan Rice might be aware, but Ben White certainly is not, and William Saliba is currently occupied by Ollie Watkins. Ben White is desperately trying to get into that space to try and cover any kind of either cutback or general cross. If we fast forward on just a little bit more, this is the best piece of movement that we see in this attack and it's John McGinn just stopping he just stops that's all he needs to do he understands that these Arsenal defenders are panicking and running towards their own byline Leon Bailey is about to take on Gabriel and place in a cross it's brilliantly done which gets him his assist but at the same time John McGinn just stops allows himself to receive the pass through from Leon Bailey and then he's able to swivel take the shot and slot it into the net now again that wasn't too many touches i think it was around about five it could have been less could have been a little bit more but the point is the transitional play the dynamism the absolute awareness of john mcginn to not only halt his run but make sure that he didn't overcommit himself into certain scenarios it caused arsenal no end of problems and it ended up being a goal aston villa are devastating in these scenarios as well as creating different opportunities to score themselves we've seen them dominate game a game against manchester city which was absolutely phenomenal they are the real deal mark my words and if you don't notice it now you'll notice it later on they are serious and in my mind they're getting top four could they get more is it possible could it happen let me know your thoughts in the comment section below on how you believe Aston Villa are going to do this season. Let me know if you're a Villa fan, how you're feeling about the campaign. Are you loving it? Are you just ecstatic? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. And I hope to see you in the next one. But until then, my friends, take care.